It's time for Combo Breakdown. Whether you play CDH or like to keep it casual, we here at Gemstone Mine would give you the tools to play and to play against some of the most popular combos in the format of Commander. Today, we're breaking down Glinthorn Malcolm, a really interesting and unique combo which ends the game with pirates. Let's start by going over the prerequisites. In order to pull off this combo, you're going to need to control Malcolm, Keen-Eyed Navigator, and have Glint Horn Buccaneer and at least one additional card in hand. Malcolm, Keen-Eyed Navigator, is a legendary creature, Siren Pirate, a 2-2 for 2 and a blue, with Flying and Partner, which means Malcolm can be one of your commanders. Malcolm's ability reads, whenever one or more pirates you control deal damage to your opponents, you create a treasure token for each opponent dealt damage. Our combo begins with casting Glinthorn Buccaneer during our pre-combat main phase, for a cost of 1 red red. Glinthorn Buccaneer is the other creature who helps us give the name for this combo. Glinthorn is a 2-4 Minotaur Pirate with haste. It has a triggered ability of, whenever you discard a card, Glinthorn Buccaneer deals 1 damage to each opponent, as well as an activated ability of 1 in a red, discard a card, draw a card. Activate this ability only if Glinthorn Buccaneer is attacking. So let's get our Minotaur swinging. Next, we're going to change the phase to combat. After that, during the Declare Attacker step, we're going to declare Glinthorn Buccaneer as an attacker. Next, before changing steps to the Declare Blocker step, you gain priority and may activate Glinthorn Buccaneer for a cost of 1 and a red, bringing the total cost so far to 2 red red red. When you discard a card as part of the cost of activating this ability, Glinthorn Buccaneer's triggered ability goes onto the stack, dealing one point of damage to each opponent. Then, Malcolm Kenai Navigator's triggered ability goes onto the stack, creating a single treasure token for each opponent, which will be three treasures in most pods. Glinthorn Buccaneer's activated ability resolves, and you draw a card. Then, you tap and sacrifice two of the three treasures you just got to produce one in a red to activate Glinthorn Buccaneer's ability again. We then repeat this process from step four. The result? Each iteration of this loop results in one damage to each opponent, one additional treasure that you get to bank for later, and you can rummage by discarding one and then drawing one, giving you a modicum of the ability to shape your hand. The ideal result? If you have more cards in your library than the player with the most life, you win the game. The surface area for this combo are two creatures, which can be interacted with at instant speed. Opponents have an option to interact with the casting of Glinthorn, changing steps to combat, moving through the phases of combat, from beginning of combat to declare attackers, and then to each individual activation of Glinthorn Buccaneer. Those two creatures are the primary sources where you can see the combo being interacted with by your opponents. The clock on this combo is zero turns. Once you resolve Glinthorn Buccaneer, that Minotaur has haste. You can declare him as an attacker in the same turn as long as you cast him during the pre-combat main phase. Sorcery speed interaction is not going to save your opponents. The critical turn for this combo is three. Malcolm is really good at generating mana. And a deck built to capitalize on Malcolm can usually threaten to resolve Glinthorn Buccaneer as early as turn 3. If your metagame is not prepared to interact with creatures by turn 3, Glinthorn Malcolm can easily result in a win. Before we bring this episode to a close, we should comment on a fringe case with this combo. If one of your opponents has more life points than the combined life total of both of your other opponents, the two opponents with the lowest life totals will result in losing the game from this combo. The opponent with the highest life total will take damage equal to the combined life total of both of your other opponents. Then you'll move to the declare blocker step and you will be up zero treasures by the end of it. You will have drawn a number of cards equal to the total damage you dealt to that last remaining opponent. If one of your opponents has already been eliminated, or you are only playing a three-person game, the power of this combo goes down significantly, as you are only generating two treasures with each iteration of the combo, meaning you can only successfully eliminate the player with the lowest amount of life. This is not always an instant win on the spot, but in most four-player games, it is absolutely a win on the spot 
unless someone has gotten very far ahead in life, or you have multiple opponents with very low life totals due to prior game actions. This combo has some applications in CEDH, although overall, it seems like it should be just fine for most optimized games. The early critical turn and short clock of zero turns can make it very difficult for more balanced playgroups or more casual playgroups to reliably have interaction ready to try to stop you from resolving your Glinthorn Buccaneer. If you want to play this combo in a more casual game, you should try to minimize your deck's options to be able to tutor out your game-winning combo. This can push back the critical turn significantly and open up more options for players to have more interaction ready. If you're interested in learning more about this particular combo, there are decks on the CEDH decklist database in both Grixis and Teamer colors that use this combo with Malcolm to win the game. I'm also working on a video primer for a version of this deck that wins in only Is It Colors. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. We've got lots more coming. Also, let us know what combos you want to hear about next. Is there anything really new and interesting coming from upcoming sets that you want to see dissected? Be sure to leave a comment. You can add us on Twitter, where we are GemstoneMineMTG. You can send us an email at gemstonemindpodcast at gmail.com.